Thank you so much for coming. It's so good to see all of you, and I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to this event. Um, there's some exciting things going on in the workplace right now. One of them is a huge wave of change that's coming and already here, and that is that the millennials are now 50% of the workplace. 30%, that's surprising, isn't it? Yeah, and 30% of them are in managerial roles. So they're managing people frequently that are older than they are, have different social norms than they do, have different values and expectations, and perhaps most importantly, have different communication styles. So that can lead to major dysfunction, poor job performance, high turnover, and all kinds of problems in the workplace. But today I'm gonna to share with you some ways that we can all navigate this wave of change in a smooth and graceful manner. You see, each generation, and we all know this, bring with them to the workplace their own strengths, their own talents, things that they're good at. And when we blend and we take the best from each generation, we have a harmonious workplace where we collaborate and we work together and we make progress and reach new levels of success. So riding the wave of change means blending the best of each generation. Well, I've been working with millennials for a long time. Two of my favorite people in the whole world are millennials, my children, Kiefer and Chloe. So I'm not, working with millennials was not a big surprise to me, but what was surprising is the reaction that I found from older generations, baby boomers like myself, saying, oh, those millennials, they are so entitled. They have no company loyalty. And in the world of leadership and coaching that I'm involved in, I kept hearing these things over and over again. And I thought, this doesn't sound like the group that ran around my house growing up. So I started to do, ask more questions and do more of my own research. All of this led me to actually coaching and working with millennials more closely, especially over the last three years. And what I've learned is that each generation, when we come to the workplace, we bring the things that we grew up with along with us. Those define our worldview. So to understand millennials, for those of us who are baby boomers, Gen Xers, and even traditionalists, we have to look at how they grew up. We have to go back and look at the culture they grew up in, the things they were used to doing when they were growing up. And I remember our house was a place where lots of kids hung out. We had a swimming pool, first of all, so they'd all come over and swim. We had lots of bikes and other toys. They'd come over and ride their bikes. We lived in the country. They'd watch movies and their favorite TV shows, but more importantly, they would play video games. And I think that looking at video game mentality oftentimes can define what this generation thinks are the norms. So when you're playing video games, if you're not doing very well, let's say you're playing Mario Kart and you're losing all the time, what do you do? You switch to Mario Tennis, that you know that you're better at, right? Um, and another big factor in video games is you're always trying to get to the next level. And if you don't get to the next level, what happens? you get really frustrated, and you read the cheats. I don't know if you're familiar with the cheats, but that was a big thing at my house. You have to read the cheats, and then you know how you get to that next level and beat your friends. So video gaming really defines a lot of what the millennial generation views as norms, and they bring these norms into the workplace with them. Something else that comes to mind when I think about the way this generation grew up is snacks. And that may sound crazy to you because we all grew up with snacks, right? All of us had snacks. But recently I was talking to one of my friends who manages about 35 sales reps across generations. And I said, well, what do you notice multi-generationally? Are there differences? And she said, well, not really. Most of the differences are personality or behavioral based. And we kept talking about that. I said, yeah, I can, I can see that, that happens. And then she said, but wait a minute. What I have noticed with the younger generations is that they really like free stuff. And I said, free stuff? What is free stuff? What free stuff are you giving them? And she said, well, they get real excited if there's snacks. 
in the showroom kitchen. <laughs> All their favorite snacks. She said, that's a much bigger deal to them than to my older reps who would just as soon go down to Starbucks. And so flashback to my house and all those millennials growing up in my house, what was a really big deal was free snacks, things they liked to eat. The freezer would be loaded with frozen pizzas, taquitos, ice cream and popsicles. The fridge would be loaded with drinks, soft drinks, juice drinks. The pantry always had to have, still has to have today when my kids come home, boxes of the instant mac and cheese. <laughs> Gotta have that on hand. Campbell's soup, crackers, all of those things, that was such a big deal and it still is. So what this tells us is that their norms can be really different than other generations and that's okay. But when we understand them, then we can function better working in the same office, in the same environment. Some other norms that I've noticed is that this generation likes to use the word why. Not how, not what, not where, but why. And it makes me also think back to when they were growing up and they'd all be hanging out at our house and they'd be talking about what they're doing, what's going on at school, what their favorite shows are. And the big question when we'd tell them to do something was why? Why should I do that? Why should I go there? Why is this important? Well, if you spend much time working with millennials, you'll realize they're still saying why. Why are we doing it like this? Why has it always been like that? So don't be put off when you hear that question. That's a question that maybe we should all ask ourselves more, more frequently. Other social norms that are different with this generation are things like getting promoted. I remember, you know, in fact, 15 years ago, my whole family moved across the country from Texas to South Carolina so my husband could be promoted. We just did it. We thought it was important. We still think it's important. Well, this generation isn't as quick to do that. One national sales manager told me recently that his regional sales managers don't care sometimes about promotions that require them to move. And he'll say, but it's a really big step for you. You'll make more money. You'll have more opportunities. And they'll say something like, but I don't like that city. <laughs> and they won't move. So they look at being promoted and making changes in your life completely differently. One young millennial shared a story with me recently about how he was up for a promotion that involved moving to a smaller city in a different state. And he got the offer and he went home and he shared it with his wife, all excited. And she said, I won't make as much money there. It's a small city. I won't be able to build my business to where it is now. So this young man had to call the manager back and say, I'm gonna decline the offer. The manager just about dropped the phone, according to the story I heard. He just couldn't believe it when the young man said, but it's not good for my wife. It's not good for my family. Most of the millennials in this generation, they're dealing with two income households. And so they're gonna look at those opportunities maybe a little different than previous generations did, where maybe there was always one income that was more important than the other. All of these differences come into play and they can cause dysfunction in the workplace. But there are three areas that I think where this wave of change is going to be the most noticeable. And the first one of those is communication. How many of you have noticed that communicating with millennials or younger generations can be a little different, right? They don't get real excited when the phone rings. <laughs> Usually, they would much rather you would just text them. In fact, I heard one of them say recently that she thinks it's rude when people call her. <laughs> she works in a call center at Fidelity, so <laughs> that might not work so well for them. Uh, but yeah, communication is completely different. About three years ago, I was asked to start doing these leadership classes for an organization, and I said, yeah, I was excited. And they said, and at least half of the people attending are gonna be younger, young emerging leaders. They're gonna be millennials. And I said, oh, I love that. That's so exciting, I can't wait. So I did my usual thing where I send out email messages and I tell them, we're gonna be reading this, we're gonna be talking about that, we're gonna be meeting at this time. Here's a couple of attachments you might find to be helpful. Days went by, no response. A few of the older, the boomers and the Gen Xers responded and said, yeah, we're excited, we're gonna be there. Not one younger member of the classes responded. 
I got there. They were all there. They were excited. I said, did you get my email? They said, no. I said, well, I'm going to send things out email. And they said, OK, we'd really, really have a text. But if you have to, that's fine. <laughs> Sometimes three weeks would go by, and I'd have no response from them over any of the emails I sent. So I called my favorite consultants on the topic, my two children, <laughs> Kiefer and Chloe. And my son said, he's the older one, he said, Mom, that's just how millennials are. You just have to accept this. This is how they function. This is the way they communicate. That was a good reminder. And I thought back to what my mentor, John Maxwell, oftentimes says, and that is that communication and connecting with people is always about them, not about me. So I thought, OK, let's flip this. Let's think about it the way I think, I believe they look at it. And I started texting more frequently. Of course, you know you can't attach things as easily <laughs> to text messages. So for those of us who like to do that, that's a problem. What I learned to do was I learned to text them and tell them, I'm going to send out an important email this afternoon. Please take time to check it. And I used this sparingly. And sure enough, they'd say, OK, and they'd check the email. So the point of all this is that we have to change our expectations about communication. And I think the best way to do this in an organization is to get together and talk about what are realistic expectations for communicating, and then define those and get buy-in. How frequently should people be checking their email? How quickly should they be responding? Is texting OK? How often should you check your voicemail? Don't assume that your so social norms are everyone else's, because it's going to vary. So the second part where this wave is going to really hit hard in the workplace is leadership. It didn't take me long to realize that younger generations look at leadership completely different than my generation. They think of leadership oftentimes as the boss, as being positional, which we were guilty of too. But they don't think of themselves as leaders. And I had to explain to them, but when you influence people, you're leading. You are leaders. And after this series of classes I did, I got the most exciting feedback of them saying, this changed my life. This understanding about leadership has changed my life in so many ways. And I understand now that I am a leader. And I understand my potential. And I understand how I can be more successful. So the solution to that dilemma, that leadership dilemma, if you want to call it that, in the workplace, I think, is to Tune in to people's leadership skills, especially those younger, and mentor them and help them and create opportunities for them to grow. Because you know what? Every organization is only as good as the leadership skills at every level of that organization. And so when we mentor and lift up those young leaders and help them grow, we all reach that next level of success. So the third area is going to be retention and promotion. And I already hear about this all the time, that the turnover is high with the millennials and that there's a real problem in that area. Well, think about it. This is the video game generation. They get in the job. They want to get to the next level. i got to get to the next level. Where's the cheats? I want to get to the next level. So many companies nowadays are flat, and they don't have that next level. So it's important to explain an ex and set expectations that this is the way it works here. And while you might not get to a next level, I'm going to help you grow. I'm going to help you learn. We're going to do new things. We're going to make life interesting. And that retention level will go up. These things that I'm talking to you about are not that different than when I was a young person trying to grow my leadership skills. I was so excited when I started my first job. Well, I lost that job. And then I lost my second job, my first year out of college, just completely devastating. But my story had a happy ending because I went to work for a company where they really wanted to develop and grow their young people. They wanted to create leaders. The first thing we did is we all had to take Dale Carnegie. This was a long time ago. <laughs> but Dale Carnegie is still big today. But that's, that's what we were all enrolled in. And that changed my life and helped me grow into the sales professional that I became, a stronger leader. And it made me feel like I had value, like I was important.
And that's what we want to do today with our emerging leaders. So I would ask all of you, is your organization ready for this big wave of change? If not, I can help with leadership training, team building, and just adding value to your people. So ride that new wave of change gracefully, ride it like a pro, and you'll be so glad you did.